Yeah, we're on track right now to uh, budget and plan for um, as far in as advance as we can. What we're looking at is uh, roads. We have failing roads. We have a lot of building going on right now in District 1, a lot of construction. There's a $65 million uh, water treatment facility going on in uh, Broken Arrow down uh, east of 71st that is creating a lot of construction traffic. Um, and and growth's, growth can sometimes be painful. <clears throat> With that additional uh, load of traffic, it creates a lot of wear and tear on the roads that we are now budgeting and planning to make uh, improvements to, um, reinforce so that it can handle this additional traffic. Um, we've been very fortunate in the last uh, last couple seasons that we haven't been hit really hard with major, major water or major ice and snow, which has uh, helped greatly on road deterioration. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, asphalting uh, several miles of road. Uh, we do kn know that uh, 305th all the way from Admiral to the uh, end of our district, which is the Turnpike Bridge um, near 111th, that, that portion of the road has received the burden, uh, the majority of the truck traffic that uh, has been experienced in the uh, growth of our area here. And we're going to have to do some uh, serious uh, work, uh, budget budgeting to handle the funding. We're looking at about $80,000 a mile. Um, so we may have to tackle this project one mile at a time. But between 305th and Lone Star, those are probably um, the two roads that we're going to have to really concentrate and focus on the most because those are the ones we're seeing increased deterioration due to the extra load that's being put on them. Uh, anything, uh, anything that you're most proud of that you did in 2012, and anything that you kind of gonna uh, champion in 2013? Anything, any project or anything? Yeah, um, I'm, I'm very happy, and again, the 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 success of of individuals are by the people that surround them. Uh, so I'm I'm very very fortunate, very blessed to have a lot of people around me who are very intelligent, very successful themselves which in turn helped me to make me look successful. But as a team, we've been working on a couple items. Uh, one is the Salt Creek Bridge. Um, it's been a, a huge hurdle uh, administratively to overcome a lot of the uh, roadblocks that's been put in our way for funding, for timelines. And we've, we've kind of uh, excelled and fast-tracked this project. Uh, we, we had an accident just a while back, uh, a few weeks ago, where Life Flight lifted off the road. Salt Creek Bridge, uh, it's about 6th or 7th Street and 305th, um, has been a problem in the past, but when the multi-million dollar road improvement project going into Johnson Port was completed, it increased the truck, truck traffic uh, so much that now we have truck traffic that we've never seen, car traffic we've never seen uh, because of the, the expansion of this road project. So we are very excited. Uh, we're today, there's surveying going on today uh, to see what it's going to take to put this bridge back on the section line, take that curve out, get it where it's an elevation and widening, putting a new bridge up that's wider. This bridge that's there has been has been registered as a functionally obsolete bridge because it's too narrow, it's on an S curve, and it's elevated. Every scenario that could be wrong with a bridge of this type, this bridge has. Um, we we have multiple accidents. It's a health, uh, it's a safety issue for the general public. And we fast-tracked it. We're real proud of that. We've done, in the past six to eight months, what most officials said we couldn't do in three years. So we're very, very excited about that accomplishment and, and the fast-track that we're going to be seeing into next year. Uh, another accomplishment is uh, learning the process and involvement of decision processes that elected officials are a part of that affect us here uh, from state uh, legislation to federal legislation and I've recently been appointed as uh, onto the steering committee for energy environment and land use with NACO which is National Association of Counties and uh, we review and and uh, discuss legislative matters that are not in the county or municipalities within small government in their best interest we review those we take those concerns to our congressmen and our senators um, and th that process has enlightened me to know uh, 
how things affect us here locally at the federal government, whether it's federal funding, state funding, um, and how everything is organized. We are, I have just recently um, been appointed as vice chairman for uh, the subcommittee on the EELU as uh, for the land and solid waste subcommittee and I will be attending meetings that will review legislative matters that affect land and solid waste um, as well as reviewing the other subcommittees that will be submitting um, uh, agenda items regarding land and uh, or, uh, air and um, water. So those are uh, going into where we're, People are really focused on the the environment, air quality. These are going to be important issues, not only that affect us at the county level. Every one of these have a direct reflect, uh, a direct effect to county government as it pertains to building roads. Um, when the EPA declares that a certain particular uh, matter in the air, dust disturbance, um, could one day be considered a fine or a regulatory um, event. That would that would almost cripple small government uh, in counties that are doing road projects, bridge projects, um, and basic road repairs. So we're looking at those as well, which I'm very very fortunate, very excited to be a part of, and uh, to to bring that message back home, meet homeowners and uh, 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 homeowner associations and constituents to update them and let them know what's going on um, and make things as transparent as possible. The more the general public knows, the better the better our county operation will look and, and be, be perceived by the general public, which I believe that's what it is about, transparency. And that's my goal is launching the District 1 website. We, we are trying to create an environment that the folks who can't on a regular basis through either handicap or busy schedule or whatever the need may be, that they can reach their county office from their home on their leisure at, their, at the time they can get to it. Um, and if questions you know, come about further that need further explanation, uh, we have an open door policy. We invite people in, take a look at the manuals we have on the uh, ottoman in here that out, uh, outline and, and lay out very plainly and very clearly, nothing real uh, cumbersome or confusing on our bridge projects, our road projects. Wh what, what is happening with the money? How long are we spending on projects? Um, and it gives an opportunity either through the website or through the booklets we have here that s someone may not always see us. They may not always see us down their street working. They may not, uh, we may, may not be visible to them. But this gives them a, uh, the ability and to feel like they're in touch, they're in tune with what's going on, and that things are happening and things are taking place. We're in the process of right now of working out an interlocal agreement with the city of Tulsa and the city of Broken Arrow. Uh, I believe that we can have a good relationship with them to make uh, the city uh, limits not a stark transition to county roads. Those should be almost transparent and, and, and uh, uh, seamless. And that's my goal is to work with the city of Broken Arrow, work with the city of Tulsa, work with the city of Catoosa in, in creating an environment where we're all helping each other. We're all Wagner citizens, um, whether you're in the city of Broken Arrow or the city of Tulsa. And we do have an opportunity to build these relationships to where everyone can be involved and everyone can, can uh, receive the same benefit, um, whether in the city or not in the city. And the, the goal would be to create a, a safer environment for Wagner citizens um, and to grow in the direction that best benefits um, every citizen of Wagner County. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Uh, uh, the web page, the books. Um, Think of the the we've been working on. Uh, you you were able to tour the yard and see the equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have we have worked diligently. We've been on a, a year a year and a half long trek to improve our fleet uh, as to um, be able to help and and quickly respond to a major snow or ice event. Um, this was something that's taken us quite a while, and we're very proud of our fleet uh, for snow plows, spreaders. Um, 
sodium uh, treatments to the sand that will allow us to use less product, uh, have more, more of an impact on safe roads through an ice event that we, the technology we're using is very uh, on, the, uh, on the cutting edge of the technology for road application and treatments. We're, we're using some of, the, some of the newest technologies in that area. We're very excited about that. Uh, the striping of the roads, uh, we've, we've striped a record number of miles of road that had ever been done in Wagner. Um, we're very excited about that. I can't tell you how many phone calls we received, letters we've received of people saying that they're driving in the, at night or after dark now and they can't believe how much safer they feel uh, when oncoming traffic's coming at them and there are lines on the road that you, you can feel mm -hmm. like you're safe and you know you're, where your position is on the road. It's a safer environment and we've been working very, very hard on, on improving public safety. Uh, brighter signage, uh, which is the ref reflectivity, which there's a new federal standard on, on all reflectivity on, on uh, signages for roads, which is your stop signs, street signs, uh, any of your caution signs. We're changing all them out for the re to get the newer, better reflectivity, which is going to improve public safety. So public safety is going to be number one key for us. Um, and in the process of doing that public safety um, uh, push, along with this, going to become transparency and more information available to them through the webpage and through the book book. One of the uh, one of the other major things that we've recently done is uh, the board uh, had a unanimously unanimous, unanimously uh, chosen district one to receive all the REIT grants for 2013, and then we're gonna, so we can do more with it, do more good with it, and then the next year will be district two, the next year will be district three, um, and as, it was a last minute kind of a close call for me as far as my time able to plan for such of a such a grant. We uh, decided to address a need that's facing all of Wagner County, primarily uh, between Districts 1 and District 2, and we sought to put in $60,000 worth of fire hydrants. So we took our $60,000 grant, and I met with Rural Water 4, I met with Rural Water 5, to see what we would be looking at expense-wise and to get the, the, the best bang for the taxpayer's dollar. Um, and we went through to find all the existing fire hydrants and to see where we would need to be, uh, you know, to have the best coverage, the most impact for these fire hydrants in light of the, the um, weighing concerns on fire coverage. So what we did is, after we looked at the map to find out where all these hydrants were, then we started to strategically pinpoint and put in hydrants in key locations in major intersections that would cover uh, the vast farmlands where wildfires can get away from us, woodland areas um, where uh, uh, tightly grouped houses are that didn't have access to fire hydrants before uh, will now, we'll now have access to hydrants. So we're, we're really concentrated on that. I, we're sitting at about 18 to 20 hydrants. Um, yes, uh, we're wait, currently waiting on the notice to proceed. Everything's been approved. The uh, plan um, of where the hydrants are going to go, the count, all that's been completed. We're just waiting for notice to proceed. EODD has already approved it. Um, we're just waiting for the paperwork to come through. Once that happens, uh, we will then work hand-in-hand -hand with a Rural Water 4 and Rural Water 5 to make sure that these hydrants get put in efficiently. Um, and effectively, and they will be on six-inch water lines only. Um, that uh, will in, increase the water flow to give ad adequate protection um, so that if in the instance where there is a wildfire or uh, a house fire, that our, our emergency responders are going to be able to get to the resources they need primarily, which is water. Um, we had an instant to where there was a wildfire on Oak Grove at about 11th Street uh, during all of the wildfires. And they had limitations on water. We were very fortunate enough to be able to participate and help. We took our 4,000 gallon water truck over there and provided water to them for that. And shortly thereafter, they extinguished that. And Oak Grove um, sent their, you know, their appreciation and their, their uh, you know, their thoughts on us being able to help them. 
was a great deal. It was a great partnership, and it saved a lot of a lot of land and possibly a lot of houses. Um, and that's kind of again that goes back to the public safety. We're we're doing everything we can to network with the the emergency teams that are in our area, whether it's Broken Arrow, the volunteer fire departments, uh, the, the municipalities, for public safety as well as uh, proper signage and and, and clarity. Um, giving people an understanding about where they are located geographically, what what may be around them that could be a could be significant to them. We worked through water evacuation uh, plan because of the new water treatment facility. It's going to be a huge body of water, uh, so we needed to have uh, evacuation plans, uh, emergency response plans put into place to be able to address these situations. And how soon do you think you might uh, be doing this project? So you're waiting on a notice, do you think? Uh... Probably January. For the fire hydrants, mm -hmm. probably looking at January. We hope we hope to have our notice to proceed by then, um, probably January or February. If it's January, we're going to uh, – Arville from R5 and Rick Lang from R4 have already uh, told me that they're going to jump right on this. We're going to work in partnership and get this done as quickly and as efficiently because as possible. Because winter is usually one of the worst months for wildfires. Yes. Because it's so dry. Yes, and so we're, we're going to get them in there. We're going to also take a look at uh, doing some uh, um, siphoning spots where we can go up to either large ponds or bodies of water um, and be able to siphon water out of those areas uh, if need be. So we're going to try to look at some of those areas um, as well as looking for public safety for, for fire control.